And thank you for joining me for the last talk of the day. Uh, we're going to talk about digital certificates and why we need SSL. We're going to cover in the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk about why certificates and SSL are transformational and why they're necessary for in this age of digital transformation. We'll take a look at some of the challenges and pain that our customers have. We'll take a look at some of the solutions that Qualys provides to help with, those, uh, with that pain. We'll introduce a Qualys Cert. We will take a look at the key use cases. Uh, we'll do a few demos, and we'll end with a, with a Q&A. So back in 1994, Netscape adopted the SSL protocol as a response to the growing concerns about internet security. Their main goal was to create an encrypted path between the client and the server that was both platform and OS agnostic. And from the very beginning, the main goals of SSL had, they had to provide four services. Confidentiality, to make sure that the message was private between the sender and the receiver. Authentication, to make sure that the sender and the receiver were, were who they said they were. Message integrity, to make sure that the message was not tampered with on route. And using digital signatures to provide non-repudiation. And today, 25 years later, certificates are everywhere. When you connect to your bank, you're using SSL. When you're connecting to your VPN, you're using SSL. When you connect to LinkedIn or Facebook, you're using SSL. When you connect to any of your API endpoints like Azure or AWS, you're using SSL. All these cloud services use SSL and certificates. And very significantly, if, if machines are talking to each other using APIs, any kind of APIs over the internet, they're using SSL to, for both authentication as well as encryption. SSL Labs runs, um, it monitors websites. It monitors about 150,000 websites every month. And if we find, and we publish the results on SSL Pulse. These are on the website. And we find some very interesting results from month to month. Here is some of the results we found from this, this month here. First, the good. There's no SHA-1 certificates. There's no 1024-bit keys uh, or weak key certificates out there. And that's mostly because all the public CAs have stopped issuing certificates that are weak. But then look at the bad. You have about 5,200 expired certificates on the internet. This is the public internet. People are actually using this or the public internet. These are sites out there. Uh, and these are top properties. These, are, these aren't some mom and pop shops there. These are top properties. There's there's another 6,000 certificates expiring the next three weeks. There's about 5,000 certificates we found that were using weak or ins insecure cipher suites like RC4 or triple DES. Uh, another strange thing that we find, SSL v3 is still rampant out there, 18,000 websites. Um, TLS 1.0, this, you know, this is old, and, and anyone who's concerned about PCI would be changing or switching over from TLS 1.0, especially with TLS 1.3 coming over. But about 75% of these websites that surveyed still have TLS 1.0. This is a vulnerability. And again, of course, we can't figure out for the life of us why 24,000 sites still have RC4 enabled. Now, Google has made a fundamental change in the way Chrome is going to warn you about certificate-related issues. In Chrome 68, that's coming out soon, instead of marking a site as secure if they have an SSL certificate, they're going to change the, change the paradigm. They're going to expect every site on the internet to be using SSL certificates. So if you're not using an SSL certificate, you'll be marked as insecure. The default expectation is that you're using an SSL certificate, and you'll be marked just as a normal site. And of course, if, you don't, if Chrome finds that you're not using an SSL at all, if you're just using HTTP, it's going to mark you as, as insecure if you're trying to fill up forms. There was a survey done a couple of years ago about um, and about 93% of those surveyed found that 93% of those surveyed, sorry, found that 43% of the users that, are, that found a pop-up coming up, some sort of a security pop-up on the browser, they abandoned the website. They closed the browser, did the right thing. They abandoned the website. But another 41% just ignored the, ignored the warning and just went on. This is training bad behavior. This is how vulnerabilities, this is how phishing attacks come along. So what's hiding in encrypted traffic, you might ask? Well, today, all kinds of malware, all kinds of ransomware, viruses, trojans, they're all delivered through SSL channels. Not only, and once the, um, once the machine is infected, 
the path back to the command and control center is also using SSL. So if all your IPSs and IDSs can't detect any of this any of this traffic because it's encrypted. Once data exfiltration starts, your DLPs are rendered ineffective because all of that takes place over encrypted channels as well. Gartner did some study last year and they found that 70% or they they uh, inferred that 70% of the of network attacks by 2020 will be using some sort of an encrypted channel. Just three years ago, this number was up 50%. So these attacks are increasing. On the dark web, you can buy a you can buy a uh, publicly trusted certificate for about a thousand dollars. That's a hundred times more than a credit card that you can buy. So you can you can tell that the, the hackers are looking at certificates as a economic vi viable alternative to hacking and an easy path into the, uh, into the enterprise network. So most organizations rely on SSL and certificates to protect their business. But most organizations don't have, have very little to no idea about where these certificates are, how many there are, what they're being used for. Most of the times they don't have any, any kind of ownership information. The unknown can become difficult to manage. And because of the unknown, you often end up with unplanned outages because of expired certificates. And for every unplanned outage that is caused because of an expired certificate or an expiring certificate, you can be sure that there's many more, many more near misses. Most companies also have a policy about which certificate authorities should be used to issue certificates to their organizations for their, for their brand. But if you don't know where all the certificates are, how do you know that you're using those approved CAs? Oftentimes, companies think that certificates are an operational issue that can be managed by, by system administrators, but that's not scalable. Usually this, and, and the lack of scalability hinders not just the innovation, it also exposes you to breaches and uh, attacks. And then when the auditor comes along and says there's some risk that needs mitigated or that you need to remediate something so that is certificate related, you can't fix that very quickly because you don't know where these certificates are or you don't know where these problems are. Some customers use spreadsheets to track certificates, but that's, you know, that's better than nothing. There's better than no tracking at all, but that leads you to complacency because if you are using spreadsheets to track your certificates, what about the certificates that were not reported on that spreadsheet? How do you know that the certificates on those servers are actually being used in the way that, that were reported? And then what about the underlying configurations? You have no idea about the underlying SSL configurations if it's weak or strong. Oftentimes, you, you, troubleshooting issues becomes very difficult because you don't know where these certificates are, both for compliance as well as for remediation and risks. The Ponemon Institute did a study a couple of years ago, and they found that the global 5,000 company spends about $15 million to recover from the loss of outages because of a uh, certificate related outage. Now this $15 million of course includes the loss of productivity, loss of revenue, brand damage, but this is in addition to another 25 million that they'll spend on remediation costs. And there's solutions out there. There's, there's many point tools out there, but that's the problem. They're all point tools. They in eventually increase the cost of ownership and the total administrative effort required to deploy these certificates. They're often deployed in operational silos or technical silos. And one silo doesn't know the, uh, cannot, cannot leverage the deployment in another silo. So they can't co collaborate or use their information. And most of these solutions are point tools. They're either vulnerability only solutions or certificate, or certificate management solutions. And because of the way they're designed, the architecture is typically very complicated if you want to cover both cloud and in-premise networks. So you end up with a SOC that looks like this. The teams want to collaborate, but they cannot because the person sitting 10 feet away from you doesn't know what you're using. The response to breaches and compromises can, can take a very long time. And this is where CertView can help. CertView, CertView not only monitors the certificates, it creates an inventory, discovers the certificates, it also looks at the underlying hosts and configurations. It can tell you uh, using our grading mechanism, it tells you what what your uh, weaknesses are and what your strengths are in both the configurations as well as the certificates here. And our expertise in vulnerability analysis for the last 20 years, we're using that same analysis to provide that simple grade. And we can provide coverage for both in-premise as well as in-cloud networks. So here's some common use cases for, for CertView. 
First and foremost, stop outages because of expired certificates. Stop unplanned outages to your critical business infrastructure. Use, use our grading system. Look at the simple grades that tell you whether your underlying configuration is weak or strong without having to become SSL or TLS experts. The unknown is difficult to manage. So you have to put an effort to, fi to figure out where these certificates are and what they're being used for. At the very least, create a baseline of all your certificates and configurations and have the ability to monitor them. To be able to tell if a certificate is, that went away, is, it that, is that a big deal? If a new certificate came along, is that interesting? And with CertV, you can get full visibility of those, of those certificates and configurations both across the enterprise as well as the, the cloud networks. The, the boundaries between the cloud and the enterprise networks are becoming blurry day by day. And then you can, you can help with your, with your compliance and audit requirements because if you want to find certificates that have been, that are still using RC4 or TLS1, you can get that in seconds by just creating a quick query. And for those customers who have standardized on the Qualys platform for their vulnerability analysis and, and for their vulnerability analysis or policy compliance, you already have your scanners deployed. All you have to do is just turn on the certificate cert view module and you can get visibility to these certificates and, and configurations. And cert view today meets most of the common use cases and we're coming up, I'll show you in the demo, we're coming up with the enrollment portions as well. Um, and the pricing, as you'll see, is very, very attractive. So why, why Qualys? Well, why, quite simply because of the unified Qualys cloud platform. There's a plethora of point tools out there. They have their own agents, both legacy and next-gen solutions. They have multiple agents, multiple consoles, and, they, and it's very hard to get data from across all of these consoles and, and tools. So some companies will slap on a SIM on top of these tools and say, hey, now we can get data from one location. But security shouldn't be, shouldn't be bolted on. It should be part of the platform, and that's what we do. We're innovating to make security part of the, part of the cloud platform itself. And we have, a, we have lots of applications, any kind of applications, any kind of security. We have cloud applications, we have vulnerability applications, compliance, asset management. We have all of these applications being delivered through the same console. And we have six public clouds distributed across the world. We have these clouds, we have a 24 or seven um, ops team that supports these clouds. Uh, again, uh, diff distributed across the network, uh, sorry, across the world. And if the cloud platforms don't work for you, you could use our private cloud platforms. And with all of these solutions, we we still think you'll get breached. I mean, there's, there's no so single solution that'll help you against all breaches. But where Callus helps you is able to be able to respond to those breaches. You will have the ability through the platform to not just discover and monitor these uh, assets, you'll also be able to respond and to, to remediate these uh, risks. And that helps you uh, recover from a breach or an attack very quickly. And best of all, CertView is free for external scans for an unlimited number of IPs. If you have an external IP, there's no excuse for you to be having an outage because of an expired certificate or having a breach because of a, a weak configuration. You can get CertView for free. All you have to do is go to qualis.com slash CertView, sign up for a free account, and within minutes you'll get, you'll get signed up for an account. If you're an existing customer, contact your TAM, and you can get CertView enabled for you. Let me get into a demo. And here you can see our default dashboard. You know, things you might expect from a typical certificate management tool. Um, expiring certificates, certificates by signature algorithms, by uh, key size. Here we have some simple widgets that we've created. that will show you certificates by their protocols. Uh, and by the way, you can create your own widgets if, you, if these don't suffice for you. Uh, if you're worried about semantic distrust, you know, here is one certificate that will show you uh, here's a widget that'll show you how many certificates that you that will be disrupted by Chrome in the next couple in the next month. In fact, uh, here's one widget that we've created that's available by default that will show you the CA distribution in your network. If you have certificates, and most of our customers will have a, a huge bar on the self-signed. Now, just because a certificate comes up in your 
unapproved bucket doesn't mean it's not publicly trusted. It just means that your organization has not approved that as a, has not approved that CA to be issuing certificates from you for you. So this widget gives you a quick snapshot of how many certificates you have, both internal as well as publicly trusted, that you are, that uh, that your that the certificates that are following policy and the departments that are following policy. If you want to find certificates that have, let's say, expiring or uh, issued by, uh, let's let's go to these semantic certificates here. So let's take a look at these certificates details. Again, some things that you might expect from a typical certificate management tool. Uh, the subject DN, issue DN, certificate attributes, alt names. If you want the raw certificate, you can download that from here. Uh, the certificate path. But most importantly, you can see how many assets this certificate has been installed on. And you can see the grades and the configurations of each of these assets. If any of you are using SSL Labs, you'll notice that these, la these gradings are very similar to how SSL Labs grades. So taking a look at this, this grade, you know, whoever configured this server using this certificate, you know, they did the right thing. They disabled RC4, they they've disabled SSL v3, and they've got an A grade. But that same certificate installed on another machine, uh, whoever is responsible for this application and machine, now remember, the, the certificate itself is good. It's coming from a publicly trusted CA. It's, it's got a 2048-bit key. It's SHA-256 algorithm. So everything is fine with the cert. Re changing the certificate in this case is not going to help. You still need to go and change the configuration, the underlying configuration on that instance to be able to get to a C grade. And you should strive to get to an A grade so that you can, s you can at least be confident that your configurations out there in your network are, uh, are not vulnerable to, to most attacks. And you don't have to be SSL experts to know what the right configuration is, uh, is. We can tell you right from here where these configurations need to be. You know, you can go into, uh, this is telling you that you've got RC4 enabled, you've got triple DES enabled. You can just drill down into your, si into your protocols and see what cipher suites are available for each of these protocols. So it's very easy to get to the information you want. You can even search for, this, for these details right through here. If you want to look for certificates that have RC4, for example, all you have to type in, and you know, the type head will, will help you look for those details. Just type, type that in, and you get all your certificates. If you don't know the, the tokens, you can just use our faceted search to look for all semantic certificates ex with 2048-bit keys expiring in the next 30 days without having to type anything. You can focus on the, c on the certificates and grades that you're, that you're more concerned about. And if you want a more asset-centric view, you can take a look at a particular asset and find out how many certificates are installed on that machine. Now, this gives you, if you have other modules from Qualys, this gives you a, a better view of, uh, or the complete view of the asset itself, a security posture of the entire asset, including vulnerabilities. Uh, if you have containers turned on, uh, if you have threat protection, if you have firmware IOC, you can see all of those details in the same screen. In this case, if I'm looking at certificates, I'll see all the certificates that have been installed on this machine. And if you're not just restricted to uh, web servers, if you have any other services like SMTP or LDAP or RDP or POP or IMAP, if they're using SSL, we'll find those services, we'll find the certificates and give you a grade for that. You can easily create reports using our reporting tool. This creates simple CSV reports that help you not just create reports for your, uh, to be ingested into other systems, you could also use this as an ad hoc alerting system. So if you want to find certificates that are expiring in the next 30 days, all you have to do is create this report find the sources if you, want to, if you want to create reports for separate data centers and separate regions separately. You could, you could select tags or you could look at those IPs. Put in the query, in this case, I'm just looking for certificates expiring in 30 days. Um, I can see the columns that I want to use. In this case, you know, we just have simple columns, but uh, future enhancement, we're going to have not just the number of hosts, but the hosts themselves, and the reasons for the grade that we saw on the other screen. You'll be able to see all of these details with, right within the report. And then you can schedule these reports to run weekly, monthly, or daily, depending on your frequency. Um, you can add notifications to send them to people that, that you need to send notifications to. And then you can, uh, and that's, that's it. You create that report, and every week this report will generated, get generated and, and alert you on, on, on certificates that are expiring in 30 days. Now, we'll come up with real-time alerting very soon. Uh, but in the meantime, you can use these reports to, for, for ad hoc alerting as well. Let me show you what's coming in the enrollment portion. Um, so right now, all you can see here is you, you have the ability to archive certificates. If you're not interested in a particular self-signed cert, you can view the details or you can archive it. And of course, if you, um, 
if you if you archive a certificate by by mistake, you can always go back and restore it. But what's coming now, or what's coming soon, is the ability to renew certificates right from here. So this certificate expired six months ago. If you wanna if you wanted to renew that certificate without having to go to the CA and do it directly from here, you'd be able to do something like this. You know, log into the platform, go to the renewable certificates. All you have to do is click on renew. You see the details. You could upload your CSR if you want to upload a CSR. If you want us to create your private keys, we'll create, we won't store your private keys, but we'll give you the ability to download the private keys uh, at the end of the session. You can submit your request, and this submit then goes to your approver. So if you've got a basic workflow, it goes to the approver. Your approver then gets an email saying that's, that a request has been submitted. You view the request. You log in as the approver. You, submit the you, you look at the request details. You approve the request. And, the, and we then send it to the CA for automatic renewal. Once the certificate has been issued by the CA, the requester then gets an email saying that certificate is available and ready for download. All you have to do is, within a couple of clicks, go there, click the download button, and you have that certificate downloaded in, a, uh, in any format that you want. And this is how simple it's going to be to renew certificates from within CertView. And that's coming soon as well. And with that, I will open it up for Q&A.